you ready? Yeah. Sure. Ready, Karen? I'm ready. Okay, let's call a meeting to order. Do the Pledge of Allegiance and have a moment of silence. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Karen, do you want to do roll call, please? Sure. Here we go. Hmm. Bailey. I'm here. Bassard it. Here. Dolan. Present. Helma. Yes. Kennis. Yes. Let's do a motion to excuse Kenneth, please. Make a motion to exclude, excuse Tom Kenneth from the special meeting. It's, I'll support. Not in the minutes. Oh. Okay, we have a motion by Thomas, supported by Bailey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, same sign. Aye. Approval of the agenda. There's no changes. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. We have a motion by uh, Hamas, supported by Dolan. All in favor? Aye. Full same sign. All of the public uh, non agenda items. Oh, God, sorry. Okay. Bob, you want to? Consideration of contract with GovHR. At the last meeting, we conducted interviews of two applicants through the GovHR program as interim manager. Um, both applicants, uh, I thought, conducted a, a great interview. The, the council made a motion to pursue um, one of the applicants, um, uh, Evan, and um, asked that a, a contract be negotiated. GovHR has a very standard contract because it's really an employee leasing agreement. This is not a contract with the individual, this is more like a services contract. <coughs> we did negotiate and talk about um, the basics, um, getting sure that the provisions all applied in Michigan and <coughs> some of the technical matters. Thereafter, it was all a discussion about uh, the rates, and the rates are set forth on Exhibit A. Um, we were up in the um, higher ranges for Evan um, for purposes of the hourly rate charged to the village. I think we negotiated down from 118 to $98 per hour. Um, I would encourage the council to um, accept the contract at the $98 an hour. That really means that um, he will be getting $70 an hour of pay and the balance goes to the um, entity, um, the leasing entity. For that money, the leasing entity takes care of all of his insurance and all of his um, um, benefits and all of his other perks that we would normally pay, which, as you all know, tallies up pretty quickly when you add it to an hourly rate. Um, the um, overtime rate is, in my opinion, very high. So I would have council be very um, aware that we should probably try to limit uh, work to 40 hours per week if that's possible. It's my understanding that to accommodate some of the reduction with lodging and travel, he will be arriving to work um, maybe closer to 9, 9.30 on every Monday and then leaving uh, at the conclusion of the day on Thursday. So, um, you know, um, we are where we're at with respect to this, and I don't. I don't think I can get the rate any lower. <clears throat> so I would be, you know, I would be in favor of the contract as now prepared. Bob, so, I had a couple of questions. Sure. Um, section two point oh one, where it says. Um, may engage financial entity, a financial entity to maintain its financial and record keeping services, which may include payment of wages or related payroll taxes, da da da. <clears throat> what do you 
what you're saying or what they're saying that he can hire? Well, no, Go I, I taught, we did, Gov Temp may engage a financial entity to maintain its record keeping services, which uh, may include the payment of the wages. That's up to them. There, there's no um, costs that would be imported to the village for that. They're just letting you know that they may do that. They have the right to do that. <clears throat> Page, what is there not numbered? Section 5.01. Effective and termination dates? Yeah. It's my understanding it's not going to start until Monday or Tuesday. So can we change those dates and it's, move them out? It's, it um, it, it's okay that the, the contract is effective on August 2nd. He, he doesn't get paid beginning of August 2nd. Okay. He only gets paid for the hours worked. Okay. We wanted to have the effective date sometime earlier this week so that if he shows up and puts in some time later this week, we have a binding contract. Okay. And the other thing, um, when you talked about the overtime, can I would like to know about that. Well, when he gets here, we could advise him in uh, any first session if the council could include that in a motion tonight to approve the contract that any expected overtime should be uh, pre-approved by the village council unless it's emergency in nature okay and then on your last page or page exhibit a um is he gonna give us a copy of his time card is that how he's keeping track of it everything on a time card or something he keeps a lot he keeps his own they have like a little journal they keep right okay. so uh, you know an appropriate motion would be a motion <coughs> to him um, approve uh, uh, the contract with GovHR for the employment of Evan Teach as the interim village manager with any overtime that is not emergency in nature to be pre-approved by the village council. Does that sound good? What's considered, I guess. Emergency? No. Okay, so she's, he flies back to Chicago, and Sue wants to talk to him about the Lone Ranger Parade on a Saturday. Is he going to bill for those hours? Yes. So I think council also needs to decide who's going to be calling him outside regular business hours to keep that overtime down. Just decide not to do it unless it's an emergency. That's what I'm saying. I mean, just, let's try our hardest to oh, avoid I, I get it. these emergency situations and... You know, I mean, there, there, there may be a few at the beginning because we do have some, you know, more critical issues at the beginning than after the, the ship is righted. So, <clears throat> you know, let's just try to avoid that because the hourly rate goes way up, right? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I, when you say there could be at the beginning, to me, I can't foresee anything shy of literally an emergent situation. Should we possibly word it that way. Nobody should be calling him after hours considering our contracts, regardless of who a designatee may be. I would be of the opinion that there's nothing shy of a true emergent circumstance that could come up that can't wait till the next day or a Monday because he's not gonna I don't disagree. realistically be interested in handling billable business out of the goodness of his heart and we should not be contacting him by any means after hours, soliciting him to respond under the assumption that it's just a casual <coughs> inquiry. I think we should designate that right off the bat. And the days that he has a council meeting, are we going to, is he going to adjust his hours? Uh, yes, we can We can uh, talk to him about that the same way, same way we do with uh, other employees. Well, if it's, if it's 40 hours and he's working 32 in the office, they leaves eight for meetings. Yes. So I'm not sure how much... The overtime doesn't kick in until 40. Right. I'm not sure how much adjusting there would need to be. If, you know, if we have one of those, you know, 19-hour night right. meetings, I suppose. Well, we're not going to do those anymore. Right. We took a vote while you weren't here. We're not doing that. Good. <laughs> I, I, I would have voted yes. Thank you. So with that point, if there are eight additional hours... Should be able to make it. 
then maybe it wouldn't be an issue in some circumstances to right. call. But let's let's just do our best to make those to not do it. You know, because it wouldn't hurt to come in under forty. Yeah. <laughs> My, my concern is that that is not going to happen and there is going to be outreach in a hundred different directions all hours of the day and I would like to avoid paying that. I, I totally agree, but I think it should probably be a separate motion, separate from the contract. Yeah, it has nothing. Because that's really okay. on us, not on him. Right. But I would totally support that motion. Well, let's deal with the contract first, then. Huh? One last question. The month. Lodging, per diem, travel, that's on him, correct? Yes. We started off the negotiations by indicating we're just, we're looking for a lump hourly rate. I'm not looking to, you know, piecemeal it. Well, if there are no additional questions, I would then make a motion to accept and approve to later be signed by the village attorney and the village president, the contract with Gov HR for the interim manager of Mr. Teach, as represented by the village attorney. Are you going to include the overtime clause <clears throat> in a separate motion? Oh, did you want the overtime in that motion? Or no, he can do. He's going to okay. do it all in a separate motion. I'll support that then. Okay, we have a motion by Dolan, supported by Helma. Can you want to do a roll call, please? Helma. Yes. Kenneth. Sorry. Dolan. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Bassard. Yes. Any second motion would still be under new business A. We're not amending the agenda. It's just a second motion under the same topic. I'll make a motion to any expected overtime, not of a non-emergency nature should be pre-approved by the Oxford Village Council and that the Oxford Village Council and others make every effort not to contact <coughs> the village manager at a regular business hours, except during emergencies. Support. Mm -hmm. Seems reasonable. Okay. We have a motion by Collins, supported by Dolan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Comments? Council comments? James. Oh. James. I have nothing. Help from the Lone Ranger on no. Saturday. Eric? None. Okay. Ask for a motion to adjourn it. Make a motion to adjourn at 6.15. Support. We have a motion by Thomas, supported by Dolan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Posting sign. No. Let's see if you can.